Good afternoon, it's Jeremy. It's Sunday, October the 1st, and I haven't used my Nano VNA for quite a while, and I really love that little instrument. It's absolutely amazing. So what I thought I'd do, I've tested pretty well every antenna I've had. So the one antenna I haven't tested is this ATSC antenna. I got it several years ago. The idea was to cut the cable. Uh, it points at the CN Tower, and on um, the CN Tower there's quite a few UHF uh, stations and broadcast uh, transmitters there. So I was able to pick up quite a few channels uh, just with this antenna alone. So I don't have um, the cable connector to go directly onto the antenna, but I do have the, the cable connector to uh, SMA for the end of the coax. So we'll go inside and we'll look at the uh, end of the coax that comes out of the antenna. So here we are, there's the, there's the coax coming from the antenna which goes into the TV and I've got an adapter to go from the uh, cable company coax to uh, a female to female uh, SMA and then a male SMA. So that's, you, you need the right adapters to do this. And then <clears throat> I've got a, a jumper, to, um, SMA jumper to go into the nano VNA. Now there's two bands that I'm interested in. The antenna covers VHF and UHF. So the first band goes, let's say, from 40 to 220 megs. That's what I'm showing here. I'm also showing it on the screen there. And we'll look at that in detail on Camtasia. So that's the first band. And um, before I did this, you have to use the open, short, and uh, termination to calibrate um, the Nano VNA. The one thing you have to consider when you're using, uh, when you're looking at a TV antenna is that it's receiving stations. So you're getting the SWR, you're looking at the SWR, but part of that is actually could be a received signal. I remember many years ago I was testing um, an antenna. It was on a thousand foot tower in Calgary, it was channel 9. And the VSWR didn't look so good, so we actually had to go up to the top of the tower in a barrel. That was pretty scary. We took our test equipment up there measured the VSWR and then we discovered that the VSWR was okay what we were receiving actually was a co-channel signal from a long way away but it looked like a return from the antenna so you got to be careful uh, when you're looking at the VSWR that the signal you're looking at is coming back from the antenna and not a received signal okay so we'll look at the next band okay so now we're looking at the UHF band uh, going from 450 to about 900 megahertz you can see that the SWR there is not too bad. It's uh, somewhere between 1 and 2. There it is on the uh, Nano VNA. Again, don't forget that some of that might be signals coming in. And also remember that we're receiving, we're not transmitting. When you're, when you're transmitting, you want the VSWR to be as close to 1 as possible because you don't want re reflected energy coming back on the receive. It's not that critical in the sense that you're not, you're not worried about burning out an output stage or something. So the next thing we'll do is let's do it from 40 to 90 megahertz and see what that looks like. Okay, so there's a total sweep from 40 to 900 megahertz. So you can see there the VHF band is not bad and the UHF band is not bad. You got some bad VSWR there and that's the, um, that's the view on the Nano VNA. So basically then we've looked at um, the VHF and UHF bands on the antenna at the end of the transmission line.